What's going on YouTube? So in this video we're going to be looking at the Pentax anti-aliasing anti filter simulator. Uh, I'm sure you know, uh, well even if you don't I'm going to explain it. A lot of cameras uh, a while ago, actually not all that long ago, uh, had in a, what's known as a low pass filter which would blur the image a little bit to eliminate a phenomenon called moiré, uh, which is really, really fine patterns within uh, within a scene could be rendered as false colors. There'd, there'd be some weird glitches in regards to the rendition of all that extreme fine detail of repetitive patterns, uh, which actually happened to me when I was recording my last video, um, or a couple videos ago. Uh, I was wearing a striped blue hoodie and uh, has a lot of fine lines on it and as I was shooting, didn't notice it, when I went to review the video, oh yeah, you could see lines just moving up and down and yeah, it was really bizarre. But anyway, that's Moiré, uh, or as you saw, that's Moiré. Um, so I was curious, how much detail do you lose when you turn the AA filter simulator on? There's two different levels. There's one and two. They don't really explain how, like, what the strength of those two differences are. Um, but thankfully, there is a bracketing feature where you can shoot non-anti-aliased, anti-aliased one, anti-aliased two, or AA fit the no AA filter, and then AA filter simulator one, AA filter simulator two. So. How much detail do you actually lose? Um, now, I did a bunch of preliminary tests before this video because I wanted to make sure this was done accurately and properly. Uh, however, in photographing the same sweater I was wearing, I can't get any moiré. So this video is going to be basically just about how much detail do you actually lose when you turn the AA filter simulator on and using both strengths, do you, is there any visual difference between the two? Anyway, let's get right down to it. All right, so there's the sweater that I was wearing in the other video that was causing all the moiré while I was video recording. Uh, I just have a uh, LED panel lighting it up. I've got my K3 the same lens I was using before, the Sigma 1770 f2.8 to 4 DC macro HSM. And uh, all right, well, here we go. So here you can see I'm in uh, in the menu, uh, an anti-aliasing filter simulator. I'm in bracketing mode here, which is showing uh, no anti-aliasing filter, and then strength one, strength two. And, uh, all right, well, let's uh, take a shot. We'll start at the full wide angle. All right. And then we'll zoom all the way in. And let's see how that turns out. And I'm using the timer just uh, so that there is absolutely no handshake whatsoever. And uh, all right, let's throw these into an editor and see how they look. All right, so here I've got the images loaded up here in DxO. And uh, I'm, I'm already at 100%, uh, so I am zoomed in. And this is the image that had no AA filter simulator on. So this is the sharpest image possible uh, from the camera and, uh, and you can see the fine line patterns in the actual hoodie and let's see what happens when we switch over to AA filter simulator strength one now you'll see it's not quite as sharp along these lines I mean it's very slight but you can see there is an actual drop in sharpness compared to this image. Let's just go back again. It's very, very, very slight, but there is a noticeable drop. Only in the absolute 
fine, fine sharpness in regards to each line. These lines are very, very close together. And let's go to AA Simulator 2. And you'll notice it's even less sharp here. Now let's go back to the original. Yeah, so there is a remarkable difference in regards to the sharpness of these lines. Now, you have to keep in mind, these lines are, I mean, it's extremely fine in between each one of those lines, right? So we'll see what happens when uh, we zoomed all the way out to 70. Uh, so here we have, oh, where was it? Uh, let's move this over to where there's a lot of differences. Here we go, perfect. Okay, so looking at all this detail here, you notice obviously because it's zoomed in, these are actually thicker, so there's more gap in between each one compared to the first images. Now let's go to AA Simulator 1. And you'll notice it's very hard to tell if there's any significant drop off in regards to sharpness. Let's go back to the other one. Okay, so yeah, there, there is a slight drop, very, very, very slight drop if you look along this section here. It's very, very, very slight. Now let's go to number two. Yeah, it's, I mean, between the two filter simulators, there isn't, there doesn't seem to be that much of a remarkable difference between the two at least from what I can see here. And let's go to the original. Okay, so the original is, once again, it is the sharpest. However, the difference between them is not as extreme as it was in these images. These images, the difference in sharpness was pretty extreme. And again, that's AA Simulator 2. And this is no AA Simulator whatsoever. So yeah, I mean, it seems that it has to be extremely fine uh, detail, like extreme to the absolute extreme. It's gotta be like less than a millimeter of gap in between each one of those lines. It has to be extremely fine. So as you're shooting, I mean, you'll find, generally speaking, you won't have to actually deal with the AA filter simulator. Now, what I do wish is that there was some way they could actually do that for video because as I showed that video that I was recording it was pretty bad you could see the lines just running all up and down up and down up and down right um, but yeah I mean this is uh, you don't seem to lose that much detail at least uh, it, it's not as much detail loss as I thought it would be given the fact that you are moving the sensor back and forth back and forth you know uh, you know in very very tiny increments just a very quick you know um like a sub a supersonic high speed vibration of the sensor but the actual loss of detail isn't as bad as i thought it would be it there is some loss of detail but it's not it's nothing that i would cry about and i mean you know in post you can always bring that detail back right uh but yeah so there you have it this is uh Overview of the AA filter simulator and how it actually looks in regards to uh, focusing and shooting on fine pattern fabrics. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. You see it yourself. So your mileage may vary, that's for sure. And apparently if you shoot at F8, it's not supposed to really be an issue. I don't, I, I can't quantify that um, statement, but I, that is something that I have seen online that F8, you don't even have to worry about it. I'm not sure exactly why, maybe the way the light hits the sensor through the lens at that F-stop, not entirely sure. But anyway, uh, yeah, so next up is my conclusion. So what do I think of this whole AA filter simulator? Well. To be honest with you, if you're shooting video, just pay attention to the clothing that's being worn and the surrounding area uh, to make sure there's no extreme fine detail in anything or you'll get all those lines like what you saw in the video that I was shooting. Uh, at the same time, I don't know if F8 would actually work to eliminate any of the moiré in video. 
Uh, however, have no fear. The AA filter simulator is here. So if you are shooting photos, uh, I wouldn't really worry about using the AA filter simulator. Go ahead and turn it on. You're not losing that much detail. It's not detail that you can never get back in post. Just adjusting fine contrast and micro contrast. You can get all that detail back. So to me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, as, as I've said, I mean, shooting photography at all f-stop from 1.8 all the way up. I've never actually had to deal with Mare. I've never had it show up at all. And I only noticed it when I was shooting the video wearing that sweater. It just popped up at a note. It was nice out not that long ago, but anyway, uh, yeah, it seems like a hurricane's coming or something. On that note, you guys will see me on my next video. I'm out.